Each month, the JX partners with Southern Oregon PBS on the program Us As We Are. Host Keegan Van Hook from Southern Oregon PBS brings stories of the fascinating places and people in our region. And he shares an audio version of the program here on the JX before the TV show airs tomorrow. Saturday. This month, we hear about a potluck for homeless people at Hawthorne Park in Medford, and then some fun in the snow at Bavaria Nights at Mount Ashland Ski Area. Hi there, folks. I'm Keegan Van Hook, and this is Us As We Are. Set yourself in Medford's Hawthorne Park, where one can find many tents pitched in various locations. This park carries significance to the homeless community in Medford. In the summer of 2020, many unhoused individuals gathered here after being pushed off the Bear Creek Greenway by the Almeda Fire. That incident, which captured the attention of the public like few other events in local history, demonstrated to many just how in need of support some in our community are. Later, while creating a video discussing Medford's changes to their public camping rules, I revisited Hawthorne Park and found a group of citizens were providing free meals to the unhoused. Ever since, whenever I drive past Hawthorne Park, I notice the same group doing the same thing, providing meals to those in need. Hi, my name is Josh Hedge. I'm uh, one of the original volunteers out here. My name is Nicole Hersmark. This is a daily lunch program. We are the Hawthorne Park Daily Potluck. Uh, One thing that we like to say is we're not just about feeding people, we're about building a community that feeds all of us. Um, We have one or two hot meals that we offer every day and people just, um, we either pick it up or people bring it down and we can serve it up. We have one to two servers every day. Hi, my name's Hobo Dave. I've been out here about 10 years. These guys help me by feeding me, so I have to go to the store and steal or else, you know, hustle some way or another to get food. It's through the help of the community. We've got so many cooks that volunteer their time, and thanks to her getting the food organized, we can get food to the cooks. The cooks can cook and process the food, get it to us. We always appreciate if they want to help serve, but even if they just want to drop off, have us pick up, we're there. Hi, so my name is Deborah Miriam. Um, I'm a Medford resident for like 23 years. While people line up, she presides over a large pot of chili. It smells delicious. Part of my joy here is to cook up great big pots of food. Uh, In cold weather, I always bring hot stuff. I take off the lid and everybody kind of like leans in and they take a big whiff and I'm like, okay guys, you know, and I serve it up. We're not just serving up the the bare bones meal. We are serving home cooked meals made with love, the same stuff that we want to share. That's that was kind of our idea. We want a potluck. We don't want to just serve what we can get together. We want to serve what makes us happy, what we want to share with our community. This is our chance to rehumanize the folks that are out here and connect them with a family dinner. You know, we're really um, trying to give people nourishing food and nutrition so, you know, you feel alive. I'm Lynn Likens and I live in Talent and I cook for the Hawthorne Daily Potluck. And for me, that's two large pots about three quarters of the way full. And it's maybe 18 cans of tomatoes or sauce or something and uh, 14 pounds of meat if I can get it and all the vegetables I can get. To get these people well, to, for them to even want to seek the healing that they need, first they have to feel like they're a part of the community, that they're worth being healed. That's rehumanization. And that's step one, a hot meal, a good meal, you know, a smile, a conversation, and then just constantly being there. People come up to the table and ask us, this is so amazing, thank you, thank you, what church are you from? And I tell them we're not from a church. And they say, well, what organization is it? And I tell them we're not from an organization. In fact, we're rather disorganized. (laughs) And I just tell them we're just your neighbors and we want to help. My name is Jus Ramirez of Ticosa. If it wasn't for them, man, we'd be breaking windows or whatever. You never know what you're going to do. Hunger is very, very, very important. And you live on the street out here outside. Yeah, I live under, under a bridge. A big part of why we started this, why it's an everyday thing, is because there are uh, hot meals around the city. But, I don't know if you ever looked, they're all over the city, one a day. One's on one end of the city, one's on the complete opposite end of the city. If you don't have a car, what is that, like five, six mile round trip? Just for you to get from one lunch to the next in two days? And ultimately, it just didn't seem fair, and we felt that there needed to be a centralized resource that people could have access to every day. And, you know, we made it. 
While talking with folks on the scene, an occasional police car would roll through the parking area adjacent to where the potluck is held. Has the city of Medford itself been helpful or the police? Do you want to talk about what the relationship is like there? Uh, I'll say this. Uh, when we started this, especially post Almeida fire, I'm sure you're remembering of all the things that happened out here in the park. We had uh, some animosity from the police towards us for a little while. But I would say over the last year, they just kind of had to come to terms with the fact that we're going to feed these folks and even if they don't necessarily want a daily resource here we need a daily resource here they need a daily resource you know and and, and if we can't agree that people who have nothing deserve at the bare minimum a hot meal i mean can't we all just find that in our hearts to agree upon i mean it feels basic to me but but yeah like i said we 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 we, we get along with the police decent now but for a while there was a little animosity but again i think it's because they just didn't want a congregation spot, but at the end of the day, food is necessary and a place to get it that's easy to reach is also necessary. Here's Steve Williams waiting in line for chili. We gotta be somewhere, so designated an area. You can't go to the Kelly shelter because they have limits, but every time you go there, they, people steal from you. So of course these people don't wanna go there. They wanna be independent. You're taking away their manhood from them. Help us out. To be so condemned and looked upon with such disgust by your average everyday citizen, it's heartbreaking and it eventually wears on them. It doesn't in any way increase their ability to be fully functioning citizens, to be dealt with in that way. So there is a very simple solution to houselessness. Um, Josh is jingling his house keys. But, but again, nobody wants to talk about the simple solutions. You know, you can hand this math problem to a five-year-old, they'd figure it out. You know, we can't as a society. So what we need to do is we need to come up with ways to make housing affordable. Uh, I believe nonprofit housing, it's time has come. I believe that base level housing for people who are living on nothing, even if it's just like a warm box, for, for God's sake, why can't we provide the base level to keep people alive? We lose people out here every year. We've lost multiple people this year, multiple people last year. Exposure. Uh, you may have heard in the news recently, one of them died one night out in the cold. It's a fellow trapped in a wheelchair unable to really function at all and people would kind of help him and wheel him up and or get him food and bring it to him um, and it was just it was really heartbreaking to think that he died because he was outside and not taken care of mm -hmm. how can that be in our society what is our excuse as americans to, to allow human beings to suffer and die for no reason so yeah, I, I think if, there, if there's a number one thing that we can do, A, it's just find a way to get these people housing. Just being able to go inside and shut the door, even if it's a small little structure, um, I think that's so healing. This is my city, Medford, and I want everybody in it to have well-being. And if what somebody needs to do is get food for any reason at all, I'm for it and I'm here to support it. And I really do enjoy cooking, so that's easy for me. I think in order to volunteer, you have to enjoy what you're doing if you're gonna do it for any length of time. We always need assistance, so if anybody can, we would appreciate any sort of, if you wanna drop stuff off, we're out here from 11.30 to one, pretty much every day. Good organization to keep with and helping people so like they're not starving, not hungry, or out doing something stupid to get their food. The Hobo stands for helping other brothers out. There are a lot of nice people around here. I mean, a lot of them. And we're getting so much joy out of doing this work. We wish we could share the joy we feel with others, and we hope to. So come join us. <laughs> <laughs> the next story I want to share with you takes us to the slopes of the Mount Ashland ski area for their Bavarian Night Ski Patrol fundraiser. It was a glorious day. Beautiful, sunny, and not even too cold while the sun was still out. I was able to talk to Mount Ashland Ski Patrol staff and volunteers about what they do and how the Bavarian Night event benefits their team as well as the ski community. Hi, I'm Ken Kempner on the patrol. Sarah Metlin, Mount Ashland Ski Patrol. Katie Manning, Mount Ashland Ski Patrol. CJ Sevilla, Mount Ashland Ski Patrol. These folks look great. Color coordinated, matching patches, and covered in ski and rescue equipment. Their look screams professionalism and importance, and it's easy to identify them for good reason. 
they have an important job to do. Uh, we save people. We, um, um, I actually talked to an emergency room doc once and he said, most doctors can't get up the side of the mountain to rescue people, so that's what we do. And we get them off the mountain to the patrol room and then off to the hospital if needed. And we're essentially first responders. Stabilize and transport on the mountain, off the mountain. That's what we do. And then we also do a bunch of work with ropes and signs and stuff to try to prevent accidents from happening on the mountain. It's all about safety. For avalanche rescue as well, so that's why we have Rolo here. Uh, he's one of the avalanche rescue dogs that we have on Mount Ashland. Rolo is a cute little guy, a silver lab with a sweet smile and easygoing demeanor. I got to ski along with CJ and Rolo and take a short chairlift ride with them where I was able to ask CJ about what an avalanche dog does. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, Rolo, you must love this job. Yeah, he's a snow dog. So an avalanche dog is essentially that. So anytime that there happens to be an avalanche that where somebody is buried, the avalanche dogs are trained to sniff essentially people out underneath the snow. Their noses are more sensitive than anything else in the world. So if in case somebody happens to be either in an avalanche, either inbound or out of bound, we can respond uh, with the dog and with our professional crew uh, that are trained. Has he ever rescued anybody? He's done two, uh, two live rescues. He's my second avalanche dog uh, that I've had actually up here in Mount Ashland. This is my 22nd year on this ski patrol. Started when I was 20 years old. Well, we all go through a considerable amount of training, medical training, and then those toboggans are the big technical thing we do to bring people down off the mountain, and then avalanche work, as CJ is saying. So it takes, it takes most people about a year to get certified to be on the patrol. So um, it, it's quite a bit of work, but obviously it's, it's really worth it for us too because we enjoy being on the team. It's a great group of people to work with. We work well together, we make a good team, and we have fun while we train, and it's just awesome to be here. All right, so tonight is Bavarian night. Who can tell me about what Bavarian night is? Well, I, I, I'm the oldest living patroller on the patrol, so I guess I, I go back. Um, it's It all began just as a party, really, and uh, Bavaria, of course, with the uh, um, with the culture and the skiing, and, uh, and it grew through the years. The main thing for us, it raises money for the ski patrol, and so the money goes towards our equipment and towards our training, and um, so it helps the mountain as well as us um, to uh, for the ski patrol. This is a fundraiser for the Mount Ashland Ski Patrol and to help build awareness of safety and to help us grow in, as a patrol professional training. We get to go to several professional training events from the fundraising that uh, we get to do from here. We're building our skill set and it's uh, so that way we can better serve the community. A lot of us have lives outside of ski patrol. Most of us have skied our whole lives, and so it sort of fits into our life whether you have a profession or not. So probably of the 50 of us, there's probably about 10 or 15 who are paid part-time, full-time. So it's, it's a mix of what you want to do and the time people have. The ski patrol is running lifts so people can ski till 8 o'clock tonight, and then a huge fireworks show at like 9 o'clock tonight. It's gigantic. It's awesome. Uh, and beautiful. They'll do it on the top of Sonnet there. It's it's a really beautiful show that's going to happen. Here on Sonnet, we have a kids uh, light parade uh, where kids uh, ski down in formation with glow sticks. And then we will also have um, a patrol uh, torch parade coming down Upper Juliet. Mount Ashland is part of the culture of Southern Oregon, and specifically Ashland, because Ashland is known for its Shakespeare festival. And so we have the runs are called Romeo and Juliet, and we have Ariel and Upper Tempest. And so we're very much part of the community. It was all started in the mid-60s at SOU by um, Dan Buckley, who was one of our first patrollers, who named, helped name the runs with the help of Angus Bomer. And so we're very integral to the community. So this, again, this is sort of a celebration of how we are part of the community. And so we're happy that people come and support the ski patrol because uh, we provide a pretty good service up on the mountain for people. We did a whole lot more besides talk at Bavarian Night. Nighttime skiing is quite the experience, and the event concluded with a torchlight parade where ski patrol members carrying red flares skied in formation down the darkened slopes, extinguishing their flames on cue with the beginning of a full-blown fireworks show. To really get an idea for how incredible this event was, I encourage you to watch the video version of my program on Southern Oregon PBS, airing tomorrow, Saturday, March 4th at 7 p.m. 
It's also available online at sopbs.org slash us as we are. Woo!